Hi, I'm Thomas Lehman. I'm the Chief of the Division of Pediatric Rheumatology here at the Hospital of Special Surgery, and I'm a Professor of Clinical Pediatrics at the Weill Medical College of Cornell University. Stills disease refers to systemic onset juvenile rheumatoid arthritis or juvenile idiopathic arthritis. The first cases were described by James Frederick Still in the 1800s, and so it bears his name. Systemic onset arthritis refers to the children who have fever and rash, as well as swollen joints and pain. It's not just children. There are adult cases of Still's disease. They're relatively rare in comparison. It's much more frequent in children. There are many of us who believe that the adults with the manifestations of Still's disease probably actually started in childhood. Often, if you interview them, they'll give you a history of having had some kind of similar illness when they were small children. The classic symptoms are high spiking fever, which falls back to normal at least once each day, and rash. In addition, the children just look very sick when they have the fever. They often complain of joint pain and not feeling well. So they'll be angry, cranky, don't want to be touched, often drawn up and harried looking. Stills typically only represents about 20% of all the children with juvenile arthritis but they're a much sicker group and so they take much more of your time. Stills disease is actually completely different from all the other things referred to as juvenile idiopathic arthritis. It's a completely different disease. All the other forms are more common in girls than in boys. This disease occurs equally in girls and boys. Okay? It probably has nothing to do with the others. The classic fever and rash are not seen in the other forms of juvenile arthritis nor are many of the complications you see in the blood work that we see so often in Stills disease. Oh, there's a lot of people out there who think that if you get on a special diet, you drink a special herb, etc., that they'll fix your arthritis. And unfortunately, it's been shown that if you believe something is going to help you, you're often going to think it helps you. But it really doesn't matter what it is. I can give you a fake pill or I can give you a real pill that looks the same for your ingredient and just as many people on the fake pill will get better. Stills is a very complicated form of arthritis because of the systemic manifestations. Often we start with the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs just like in the other forms of arthritis like naproxen, Motrin, Relafin, any of those types of drugs. Many children will be better with just that much if they're not better with just that much, then you've re relatively rapidly have to move on to drugs like methotrexate or etanercept or adalimumab. But unlike the other forms of arthritis, it's not that rare to have to use some steroids in children with Stills disease because they're so sick. Stills disease is highly variable. There are many children who just get a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like the Motrin, Naproxen, Relfin, and do fine. There are other children who don't improve until you put them on methotrexate, cyclosporin, one of the other disease-modifying agents. And there's some children with just very severe disease who you have to give every drug you can think of. Often we go as far as using thalidomide to suppress their disease manifestations or another cytokine blocking agent like anakinra. And those drugs are necessary to control them. And a few children do badly even despite all those drugs. And then you just have to see what else you can find. There's drugs like Amtemera, which is not yet licensed in the U.S. market, which seem to be effective. I started doing pediatric rheumatology in 1977, so 31 years, going on 32 years. Um, in the old days, we just had aspirin and gold shots. And if you didn't get better with the aspirin and gold shots, there wasn't very much we could do for you. We had Indocin that we could use, but in the old days they didn't like to use Indocin in small children. Now we have methotrexate, we have bolosolumedrol if necessary, we have cyclosporin. There's a whole battery of new drugs available for treating children with Stills disease. So in the old days, because we had so few drugs, often a major problem was the side effects of too much prednisone over too long a period of time. We can avoid that now. We've got other drugs to use. We can minimize the amount of prednisone that you get, and we tend to get a much better result. When you see a child with systemic onset of Stills disease, you have to prepare the parents for the fact that it's highly variable. What you tell them is this is a fairly severe disease that needs to be aggressively treated. It can't be ignored, but that we're going to have to watch and see how it evolves. 
despite the fact that we would like to have a good predictor on day one so that we could say your child's going to be easy, your child's going to be difficult, studies have shown that the only clear way to differentiate the difficult and hard to cure or hard to treat children with Stills disease from the ones that are going to do very well is to treat the child appropriately during the first six months. The children who get better with six months of therapy often stay better. If you've done six months of appropriate therapy and the child's not getting better, then that's a rather self-evident indication that you're going to have a difficult case. Children with still disease in their families need to have all the information they can. We want them to be able to read about it, understand the disease. The Arthritis Foundation can help them with that. There's books for families such as my book, um, A Parent's Guide to the Rheumatic Diseases of Childhood, which uh, help people to understand this. And your local physician should be able to help you in assessing your child and understanding what's wrong.